Hi, good morning, everybody. I hope you people can hear me. Uh, actually, I was waiting for other students. There are more students registered. I don't know why they haven't joined so far. I was just waiting for them. Anyways, so we will start just in two minutes. Okay, only in two minutes I will start. So I was just waiting for other students. Uh, they were, thank you, thank you. Good morning, everyone. So we'll just take two to three minutes. Then I will start the lecture, right? Only two to three minutes. I hope you people can hear me, all of you. I hope. Yes. So we'll be starting lecture in just two to three minutes. Okay, students, F9 financial management paper. Uh, F9 financial management paper. F9. Student, this paper, you have a bit linkage this paper have a bit linkage from f2 and f5 only a small linkage of some concept concepts and forward looking this is the basics of paper advanced financial management p4 paper which is the optional paper of acca now f9 paper is a mix it is a mixture of calculation and theoretical discussion so this paper exam is exam format we will discuss later on but just trying to tell you in the terms of calculation and theoretical if we if we pick past paper so calculation is around 60 to 70 percent of the paper and the remaining sometime 30 to 40 percent is theoretical discussion your exam has two types of section mcqs or mtqs and scenarios scenarios both type of questions are there so your exam consists of and you know very well that now these are the computer-based exams, compulsory computer-based exam, exams. Now, next. Your F9 financial management syllabus, basically FM, they want you to 
learn that what is the role of a finance manager a finance manager finance manager has to perform three roles basically that is financial planning financial control and financial decision some decisions making so f9 financial management is more about the decision making more about so students your syllabus if we talk about so the it has areas for example the first chapter is that is about introductory chapter about finance about fm and then is investment appraisal investment appraisal area which is very important and lengthy as well and usually scenario is from this area scenario can be tested scenario based question mcqs are also tested but scenarios are also most likely from this area <clears throat> third is that is cost of capital and business finance again this area is highly likely to be tested in scenario and the third is working cap fourth is working capital management working capital management students usually scenarios are from these three areas the scenario based portion of your syllabus scenarios mcqs are also tested but usually they are from these three areas and then the next area is business valuation that how to value a running business that that is a part of our syllabus and the last portion that is risk management this one so these are the six areas introductory chapter plus i can add some of the ec economic environment we have to study which i have not added anywhere in economic environment for example monetary policy what is monetary policy what is fiscal policy and some of the economic terms are taught over there So, students just need to know whether all of you can hear me clearly. Good. Right. Okay, now next. So, students, what will be our sequence of study? I will start with some introductory things, one or two definition from this chapter, but I will not finish it today. Rather than I will shift to investment. Basically, this is the first area. Investment appraisal, second cost of capital, and business finance. Third is business valuation. Fourth is risk management fifth will be the working capital and in the last we will cover this six in the last we will cover this area next so students this is how we will proceed you will be provided with the students during my class we will be using notes notes covering the whole syllabus 
and second practice questions as well each area so this is what we will be utilizing i'll provide you all the data during the class so today any question from your side any question from your side please do let me know Yes, any question from your side. Students, you can communicate here freely over here. You can ask question. You can communicate during the question over here. And when I ask you, because there is no other medium to know whether you are getting my, you know, that lecture or not, because I cannot view your faces and uh, observe body language. So, of course, you have to respond yes or no. No, need not to buy. Need not to buy, Linakshi. You can buy exam kit if you want. Study text is not required at all. For practice session, you can purchase exam kits. Okay? Study texts are not required at all. Okay? Now, next. So, students, let us start with the lecture. Now, so these are the notes. So students, financial management. Okay. These are the exam formula sheet that will be provided to you. This is present value table, annuity table. Okay, now this is the first chapter. I will be just discussing some of the things then we'll shift to the investment appraisal area. Now, next, F student financial management, the management of finances of organization. Why? This is the target, to achieve the financial objective. This is very important, that the purpose is to achieve financial objectives of organization. This is the purpose. And what is that objective, students? That is the maximization of shareholders' wealth. So financial management for that purposes, for that purposes that to maximize shareholders' wealth. This is the purpose. And shareholders' wealth is basically, it consists of two things. If we talk about shareholders' wealth, if we talk about shareholder wealth, it consists of two things. One is, that is, dividend they get, the wealth is increased. And second, that is, increase in the value of share. So these are two things through which shareholders' wealth is increased. Next, so students, financial management contains three things. Financial planning, that how to available, that funds are available in the short term, medium term, and long term. Short term means daily operations, working capital management, cash, short term. For the long term or medium term, that arrangement of funds for in long-term investment, property, plant, building, for that purpose, that planning is required. Now, next. So students, financial control, what is that? That once planning has been done, that this will be the cash inflow required. This will be the cash outflow required. So 
now control is very important that whether things are moving in a line with plan or not so compare actual performance with the forecast with the budgeted you have studied that is in the variances if you remember in uh, management accounting it is also the aspect of that variances and other things so so in that cases you control and the performance there are different ways you know in previous study you have studied now the next is that is financial now this is which is particularly relevant to f9 that is financial management decisions what what they are Financial three types of decisions are there: investment decision, that whether to invest in a business or not, whether to purchase a property, plant, and equipment or not, whether whether to start a new factory or not. Investment decision. Now the second is financing decisions. You know, uh, uh, these are the investment appraisal techniques, major portion of our syllabus. Now second is. Financing decision that how to arrange funds. We have made decision that our business will be, we will be running our business. But what will be the source? Finance can be arranged from multiple sources. Debt debts are multiple types. The loans are of multiple types. So which source need to be used? So that has to be decided, and of course that must be compared with each other. e source of finance and their impact on the business then is the dividend decision student it is very important from the investor and the stock market point of view so students you know that if you that how to decide about decision what will be the impact of dividend if we change our policy whether to change or not you know it has impact on the company's share price in the market so dividend decisions so financial management decisions are actually these three types of decisions and the then is risk management that if the company is involved in the international transactions if the company is involved in the foreign exchange transactions or company is involved in the lending and borrowing there is a risk a worse movement in the exchange rate there is a risk attached with the interest rates may go up may go down so that has to be managed that has to decision has to be made about that so these again these are these all four are part of our syllabus these all four are part of part of our syllabus next so students i will that is the only definition i will not continue with this uh, the remaining chapter i'll be back to this remaining chapter at the end of syllabus i told you now so we will start with the investment appraisal so the first section is that is investment appraisal <clears throat> investment appraisal student why to appraise investment why student to evaluate because large money is required to be invested there is uncertainty in the future that you know that of course we have not to waste the funds of the company and it's about future we have to today be wise we have to be wise enough and make wise decisions to have a better future and students of course if we are doing important and good investments if we are evaluating so we can pay higher dividends share price will improve as well if investments are good of course if we if, if our decisions are good and the fourth point is very important it cannot be reversed easily yes it cannot be reversed once you purchase a building land machinery 
and if you are going to resell that to undo the decision it is going to cost you too much you may purchase the machinery new from the company for 10 million but in the market you may not be able to sell it for 10 million if you are going to undo this decision so that's the importance of this investment appraisal that's why investment appraisal is required now next next is capital budgeting cycle or process student every company every year they prepare a capital budget this is the long term investment and how they made first of all are ideas that ideas that whether to invest the projects that where should invest they from the internal sources of ideas and there can be external sources external sources means internal sources means that they their r and d research and development they identified any opportunity or their you know that management people they suggested some project very good project to internal sources organized ideas external sources that weather has changed some need has been evolved in the society in the country in the environment so that is also an opportunity to invest so ideas are arranged and then the screening is done screening is done with the organization's objectives mission statement screening that whether should be so whether we should further evaluate it or not so, so screening means that if they don't fulfill this criteria they are screened out we say we are not going ahead with it and student two methods arr and simple payback method we are going to study that in detail and then detailed valuation through the complex financial evaluations these are financial evaluations and non financial factors ethical factors legal factors environmental factors they are considered detailed evaluation students once it is done then it is implemented implementation is done and then analysis that whether project is as effective and efficient as we initially forecasted then monitoring is done and once product is complete its audit is performed to identify mistakes which we did so that they would not be repeated in the next time student this topic has been tested for five marks in your past paper for two times that what is the financial capital budgeting process okay it has been done just give me one minute let me pick a call very important now next so students next is investment appraisal techniques let us talk about it on the board now it is time for to work over here investment appraisal techniques that how to appraise and evaluate investment 
yes student so there are two types of techniques one are called discounting techniques the other are called non discounting techniques the techniques in your syllabus we can classify into two types discounting techniques and non discounting techniques discounting techniques and uh, non discounting techniques first of all is accounting rate of return which is also called arr and the second is simple payback method of investment appraisal discounting techniques the first one is discounted payback second is net present value and the third is internal rate of return irr so these are the five investment appraisal techniques which are part of your syllabus which are part of your syllabus now next next students if during the class i shift the paper the page i turn over the page quickly do tell me do you know that remind me that i have to stay on the page okay now so do remind me so i'll be back so that you can note down the lecture so that now next so we will be, what are the discounting and non discounting we will talk about it later on a bit later first of all let us start with the accounting rate of return it is also called average percentage return percentage sorry it is also called average percentage return apr apr or arr same thing student actually how it is calculated arr has a formula in this way that estimated average annual profit divided by average investment cross 100 cross 100 this is the formula for it and how to calculate estimated average annual profit where average as why estimated because it is future we are we are investigating we are we are actually appraising the investment which is which is future investment average annual profit is equal to total profit of the project of project divided by number of years number of years and average investment is equal to <clears throat> initial investment plus scrap value plus scrap value divided by 2 divided by 
Yes. So this is our note down. Then I'll proceed further, please. Now, next. Should I proceed further? Should I proceed further? Okay, now. Students, remember, this is the profits-based technique. This is the profits-based technique. Note down with it. This is the only investment appraisal technique in F9, which is profits based. Remember that. Just see here, example. Let us write some example and try to learn it. For example, a project is here. The initial investment is, for example, initial investment required is, 4,000 million. Scrap value will be, for example, that is 200 million. And estimated profits are as follows, for example, that is 1,500, that is 1,700. I said profits are as follows. That is 17. <laughs> That is 1800, that is 2000. And that's it. Now we have to calculate ARR. First of all, we need to calculate it average annual profit. We will add all 1500 plus 1700 plus 1800 plus 2000 divided by number of year four. And then we will get the answer. Yes, please. Fifty five hundred, I think. Uh, sorry, not fifty five hundred. Sorry, it is seventeen fifty. Seventeen five zero is the average annual profit. Now, average investment. I will calculate here average investment that is equal to 4000 plus 200 divided by 2 and that will be 2100 so arr will be estimated average annual profit that is 1750 divided by average investment cross 100 and here you can calculate the answer that is 83 <clears> percent <throat> error note it down then i'll proceed further after noting down kindly tell me that it is done done or okay then it will be a message for me to go for to move forward Okay, now, next. So students, just see here, decision making, how to do. Students, each organization decide a target ARR. 
we have target arr that if project arr is greater than or equal to target arr then we say accept the project otherwise reject it because project is producing more than or equal to the target now next this was quite easy students i said you that i told you that it is a profits based technique if you are given cash flows then how to calculate profit students what is the difference actually first of all we need to know the difference between the both how to calculate cash flows from profit or profits from cash flows when you see here just try to understand we know sales and other costs are deducted and then we get a profit here depreciation is also deducted provision is also deducted so profit is there so cash flows when we calculate cash flows we add back profit we add back non cash expense which have been deducted over here it is added back then we get cash flows so cash flows are equal to profit plus non cash expense so this is the linkage so this is the linkage now students let us try to understand with an example for example a project require initial investment of i keep the amount simple 100 million scrap value will be at the end of the project will be 10 million okay now next and cash flows I said cash flows will be as follows. Zero, one, two, three, four. Four year life is there. Cash flows are like that. 40. 45, 50. 47 these are the cash flows we have to calculate arr kindly note down this and i will turn over the page and solve it this example yes here it is student what we have to do is we can write in the even column form if you if you are easy any way you can solve column or in the row so cash flows 40 45 50 47 students for arr we need profits we don't have that and we know that profits plus non cash expense is equal to cash flow for example another thing is given to us that depreciation on investment is 
on straight line basis. It is also told to us. Next. So students, we have to calculate, you see here, depreciation. So you see here, profits is equal to cash flow minus non-cash expense. Rearranging the question. So we need depreciation for each year. Straight line. So depreciation, how it is calculated? Initial investment. Co not initial, okay. Cost minus residual value, sorry. One minute. It is profits. Cost minus residual value divided by number of years. So you see here, cost is 100 minus 10 divided by number of year 4. It is 22.5. Depth in every year. So students, now we can find our answer. Depreciation or non-cash expense. 22.5, 22.5, And here will be the profits for each year. Here 17.5, 22.5, because deducted, deducted. 27.5 and 23.5. This is the profits. Now the rest is easy. So if you have noted it down, do let me know. I'll proceed. Now, next. Thank you. Now, students. So student, now estimated average annual profit. Average annual profit we need. That is 17.5 plus double 2.5 plus 27.5 plus 23.5 divided by 4. So that is average annual profit. You will calculate over here. Now, seventeen point five plus double two point five plus twenty seven point five plus twenty three point five. Yes, divided by four. Double two point seven five. Now, average investment that is equal to Initial investment 100, residual 10 divided by 2, that is 55. So ARR will be like that. Estimated average annual profit 22.75. Average investment 55 cross 100. And here will be the answer. That is 41.36%. For example, 
target arr is 30% then we will say that how we will write it is told in the question student it is told in the, it is given in the question if they require from you so we will say that the arr of the project is 41.36% which is higher than target arr 30% so project should be accepted project should be accepted project should be accepted 23 what is 23 uh, average annual profit 22.75 yes around that Now, next. Next. Students, accounting rate of return. Let us go to the it's theoretical discussion. It's here. <clears throat> so the expected profitability, yes, of the project is, can be compared with the present profitability yes to assess whether profit will be the same or not and the second is it is easy to calculate because because it is based on accounting profits sorry because it is based on accounting profit which is available Simple to calculate and easy to understand. Everyone knows 10% profit, 20% profit. Everyone knows and easily. And it considers the whole project life, all the profits of the project. now disadvantages students it is not cash flow based it involves profits it is not the cash flow based rather it is profits based if i say it is profits based which can be manipulated through non cash expenses increase the depreciation or decrease it 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 will be changed yes it does not consider time value no discounting or compounding done in it so there is a flaw it is relative my year now you see here we said it is easy to understand that it is giving answer 10 percent profit so 10% profit means how much profit in quantity it is not telling us. A project, for example, project A and project B, ARR for it is 10% and its ARR is 30%. But total profit by A project A is 20 million and by it is 5 million. By percentage, we say we should accept this but you see total profit. So it is relative, my year does not consider the size of the project or profit. Okay, right? So this is actually reputation. 
this is repetition i will remove it it is a repetition now so target rates again target rates decided by the board which are again subjective that what should be the sufficient now so decision criteria which is set by the board again it is based on judgment that what should be suitable their own judgments in our involved okay and that next you see here students you see here the last point i will explain you see we used annual you see here what what was the rate used to calculate profit used 22.75 how much in the error did we earn this profit in any year 22.75 we didn't earn this profit in any year rather it is average actually we are not getting it so you see here the 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 average profit we are using in calculation that is not being earned in any, any year you see here that's what it is being written over here now students is it clear to everyone these advantage disadvantage are clear to everyone now next so what about other zoo people they are silent any question please ask me i will repeat it now next simple payback simple payback period method the next method of investment appraisal is simple payback so students simple payback period method student payback period every businessman who is investing who is investing in the business that is concerned that that in how much time the investment will be recovered i am going to invest a money today in how much this is the first concern profit is the second the additional inflows are the second concern that is the second concern so the payback period tells it tells the time period in which initial investment of project will be recovered in which initial investment of project will be recovered it tells
So students, this is the first concern. Because when we go to the arrange investment, for example, a project which require investment of 10 million, and we have to borrow from the bank, and we have to, and we have to borrow this money from the bank, and uh, we need to arrange a loan. The first question bank will ask that for how long you need this loan? So we have to investigate first of all that in how much time we can pay back. Then we will negotiate accordingly. Now, next. So students, how to calculate payback? So the students, how to calculate? Student, it is, I said, this is all techniques are cash flow based. Now onward, which we will study, cash flow based. So payback is as well. So student, for example, a project has even cash flow or uneven cash flow two possibilities may be there even cash flows or uneven cash flows even cash flow means same cash flow every year uneven cash flow it means different cash flows every year Now, the student same cash flow every year, how to calculate, for example, the initial investment require is 12 million and project will be giving 3 million cash flow every year, next six years. So next six years. So how to calculate payback period? will be equal to initial investment divided by annual cash flow. So initial investment is 12 million, annual cash flow is 3 million, that is equal to four years. So four years is the payback period. Now, next, students payback. If it is bank is wishing to, bank is giving us loan for this period, or we have funds for four years spare, we can pro accept the project. Payback, otherwise we cannot. Otherwise we cannot. Now, next. So the next is uneven cash. If project has uneven cash flows, then, for example, just see here one, two, three, four, five. Initial investment is 700, 200, 350, 175, 190, and 200. Now, how to calculate payback? Here are the cash flows.
Now, how to calculate payback? We have to calculate another column which is called cumulative cash flow column. Cumulative. Now, how what is that? 700 negative, this 200 will recover. Remaining will be 500. 350 recover, 150 will be remaining. So you see here, we need 150. And in this year, they are getting 175. It means two year complete plus part of year three, not full. And how to calculate 150 we need in year three, we are getting 175. We are getting 175. So you see here, payback period will be two year plus, we will calculate it, 150 divided by, one fifty divided by 175, 0.86. 0.86 so 2.86 year is the payback period Now, next. So should I proceed further? Good. Student, for example, you are given, you have been given now profits. Now, this case, profits have been given to you. Profits of the project. You have been given profits. 750, 470, and 560, 550, 720. These are the profits. And project requires initial investment of, for example, that is 3,000, 3,000, yes. And scrap value is 200. Now, my requirement from accounting depreciation method will be straight line. My requirement from you is calculate ARR, please. Calculate ARR and tell me. Task to use ARR. Calculate and tell me, please. Be quick.
Now, next, have you calculated it, please? ARR. What is ARR? Thirty-eight point one two percent. Okay, what about others, please? Have you done it? It's easy. It's already profits. You have to just average out profit and divide by average investment, that's it. Now, students, depreciation. For payback, if we need to calculate payback, we have to calculate cash flows. So we, from the profits. So what will be the depreciation, annual depreciation? 3,000 minus 200 divided by number of year five. That will be the answer. Now. It is 560, the appreciation every year, 560. So we know that cash flow is equal to profit plus non-cash expense. So we will add back depreciation, 560 every year. And then we will calculate cash flows. One, three, one, zero. One, zero, three, zero, I think it is. 560 plus 470, yes. Next. Double one, two, zero. Double triple one zero and here twelve eighty. So now we can calculate payback from here. We can calculate payback from here. Quite easy. Calculate, please, and tell me answer. Initial investment is three thousand. Negative. Payback, 2.59 years, okay, other people as well?
नेक्स्ट प्लीज 2.59 सो यू सी हेयर स्टूडेंट्स वेरी इजी 3000 माइनस 1310 माइनस 1030 सो एवरीबॉडी हैज गॉट द सेम ओके गुड वेरी गुड सो दैट्स इट सो नाउ वी विल डिस्कस द ड्रॉबैक्स एंड एडवांटेजेस ऑफ पेबैक सो स्टूडेंट्स पेबैक एडवांटेजेस सिंपल टू कैलकुलेट इजी टू अंडरस्टैंड वेरी गुड yes relative risk is compared the project which has longer payback more risky because pro investment will be recovered later risk is high it considered cash flow it is that are is considered cash flows based on cash flow cannot be manipulated okay next the next is short payback increase the liquidity of the business yes liquidity timely recover avoid risk so students this last point you cannot understand right now because capital rationing is a topic which we will study later on and then we will will understand it next so next is the drawbacks it ignores the yeah this is very important it ignores the cash flow after the payback period let me explain it let me explain it when you see here 1 2 3 4 it is project a and this is project b 5 just try to understand it investment is same 400 300 300 150 200 cash flows 500 300 200 400 450 both projects have payback of 3 year but payback as per payback which one should be let like anyone can be selected payback is not giving us idea that this is giving higher return it is not giving us an idea that payback is giving a higher return after the payback period it is not next so students second it does not consider time value of money we have not done discounting and compounding at all it considered cash flow which are getting here and which we are getting here no difference which is wrong student yes this is drawback that payback encourage invest in short term projects not the long term not the long term now so students this is the problem so students uh yes student cash flow 400 it is about future this 400 that it will receive in the future this cash flow but how many chances are that this will be achieved this will be received no idea there may be because future is uncertain variable future cash flow may be, may not be 400 they may be from 300 to 500 either 300 or 500 are in between so payback is not considering the variability of the cash flows variability that they can change project with the same payback may have different cash flows just like that same payback but cash flows total are 
different. Now, next. So student, the next two points actually, I'm going to remove actually, I'm editing the notes as well, which are actually more than necessary. Okay, now. So students, that's the end of payback period. Now, now the next topic that is, discounting techniques we have to start but before we start this discounting techniques we will have a break we should have break is it or not is it or not because next then one one and a half hour we have to study okay so <laughs> right so that will be 10 minutes or 15 minutes how much how much 10 minutes or 15 minutes how much break tell me 15 okay done so 15 minutes break after 15 minutes we'll be back and we will continue from here
Yes, students. Are you back, all of you? Are you back? So we have to study this talk, concept, time value of money. We have to study this concept. It is very important. So I'm just waiting for other two people. They have not responded whether they are back or not. Okay, one person only left, Girish. Okay, good. Time value of money, the concept. What is it? What is this concept? So then time value of money means that so time value of money what is this concept? That two days one dollar has more worth than tomorrow's one dollar. Yes. Why? Why it has won due to three reasons. Due to number one, inflation. That due to inflation tomorrow, its value will be decreased. Inflation. Second, if you get one dollar today. You can invest it and make double till tomorrow. But if you are getting one dollar tomorrow, that will be one dollar. So opportunity for investment. Opportunity for investment. Opportunity for investment. Third is risk. It is sure that you are getting amount today. But it is not sure that you will be getting it tomorrow. But it's not, it is not sure that you will be getting it tomorrow. So risk or uncertainty is there. Risk or uncertainty is there. So because of which two days value is higher. So three reasons which actually cause time value of money. That two days value is more than tomorrow's money. Now, I hope the concept of time value of money is clear. Next. Next. Here. Students, the next concept is of discounting and compounding. Student, for example, you have $100 today. $100 today you have. And you go to bank and you invest this hundred dollar for one month for one year at 10 percent so what will happen what will happen after one year hundred dollar plus for example interest rate is 10 percent you will get one ten you will get one ten and then for example after one year, again, you invest 110. So second year, you will get 10% on 110. And the amount you will get, that will be 121. Now, the student just see here. I need focus. 
out of these two i can take 100 common and it will be 1 plus 10 percent any issue in it any issue in it is it clear any issue in it okay thank you next next so student you see here this is the amount 100 which you are investing today today it is present value this is the rate r at which you are going to invest and this is the amount you will get after one year future value if you are investing it for one year it's par one for two years par two and for n year its power will be n so we have learned a formula present value into one plus r raised to power n n is equal to number of year r is equal to rate of return you are going to get you see we say we have 100 today and we are going to invest it for 10 percent point one ten percent for two years if we solve it answer will be 121 same we calculated here you see after two years note it down then i'll proceed further Next, students, we have learned this formula that present value is equal to, sorry, uh, we have learned this formula, future value is equal to present value 1 plus r is to power of n. That we can calculate future value of any amount today. So rearranging this. So present value is equal to future value. 1 plus r is to power minus n. That if we multiply any amount with this factor, we will get its today's value, present value. This amount, this is called, this formula is called present value factor. Because it converts future value into today's value. It is also called discount factor. And for different rates, for different rates, discount factor is given to you in exam formula sheet. It is given, it is provided. Okay. Rather, now your answers have to be done, of course, in exam through spreadsheet most probably in the next class i'll be solving the point these things in the spreadsheet the way it is done in exam so today just we are discussing basic points concepts when we'll be solving full question we'll do in exam pattern right okay now next so students next so discounting techniques Discounting techniques are, if you remember, initially I told you that there are two types of techniques here. The discounting techniques in which discounting is involved, they consider time value of money. 
is considered and here time value is not considered no discounting is not considered students we learned we have learned payback period and payback period method has a drawback the drawback was that payback period method does not consider time value of money this was drawback means no discounting and compounding is done you think the amount which are getting after four years and now there is no difference because of 100 today and 100 after four years that's equal which is wrong which is wrong so there is concept of discounted payback discounted payback there is a concept of discounted payback which actually removed this flaw all other things about discounted payback are same which are related to simple payback only one flaw was removed now you see here this is a project initial investment is 1200 300 450 500 410 200 these are the cash flows student if we calculate its payback so cumulative cash flows column will make and 1200 simple payback we will calculate simple payback 900 450 and two year plus 450 divided by 500 2.9 years that is a simple payback note down there i'll proceed Good. Well done. Next. Students, I will use the same data. I will use the same project data. You see here, cash flow 0, sorry, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Cash flows 1200, 450. Sorry, the first one is 300. Sorry. 300, 450, 500, 410, and 200. We have to calculate discounted payback. So, for example, rate of return is 10%. So, what we'll do, we will do discount factor at 10%. We'll apply. And that is given in the formula sheet. By the way, in Excel, we can incorporate in another way. Okay, now. So, formula sheet will be given to you. I have told you initially. Just one minute, please. So here is the annuity table. Here is a discount, present value table. So 10% rate, discount rates are given. You know this table before your earlier studies. So a 10% discount factor, 
0.751.683.621 will multiply and calculate present values 1200 negative and multiply with this 273 around and then is 450 cross 0.826 it is 372 and then it is 500 cross 0.751 it is 375 and next is It is 280 and then it is last one 124 so students now first of all we need for discounted payback we need to calculate present values and then we have to prepare a cumulative cash flow column 1200 negative 273 received yes 927 negative now 372 received triple five negative then 375 received 180 is negative they're negative sorry and now you see here three years complete plus 180 divided by 280 so three point six four years that is the discounted payback and you see here simple payback that was less it is greater and it will always be greater so we will write one sentence here that discounted big back of a project will always be greater than simple payback note it down student kindly Kindly note it down and then I'll proceed. Okay, done. Good. Good. Next. So, friend, its advantage and disadvantages are the same as that of simple payback. Only one advantage has been increased that it considers time value of money which simple payback does not now next next so the next is students some further discussion of compounding and discounting some further discussion that will be done once more students we have learned how to calculate present value we have learned that, for example, amounts are here. So we will apply a discount factor, for example, at 10%. And we multiply, and then we calculate present value today. Sum of all that. So you know when we have to calculate the present value of single amount present value of single amount we know that discount factor is used 
single amount yes single amount these are single amounts single amounts you see relevant discount factor product value is there but there are some cases that for example 700 every year now one way is apply discount factor but that is too lengthy there is a shortcut as well what is that that is not what is not not is a series of cash flows not is a series of cash flows having following characteristics number 1 constant amount constant amount second second at constant interval number 3 for limited period of time for limited period of time limited or known you can write it in addition limited or known period of time that cash series of cash flow is called not now next students just like that we said cash flows three four seven hundred you will be getting every year how to calculate present value so present value will be annual cash flow multiplied by not factor for total cash flows total cash flows so you see here 700 for example rate is 10 percent so 10 percent for total cash flows how many one two three four not factor we will check we will check not factor yes 10 percent for four 3.17 so cross 3.17 multiply it and then present value of all these four cash flow will be here Double two one nine. Yes. Thank you. Double two one nine. Students, NOT is of three types. NOT is of three types. Simple NOT. not due or in advance due or in advance or delayed or deferred not delayed or deferred not now what is the difference between these three one by one what they are simple not what is that where it is such an OT where 
कैश फ्लो स्टार्ट टू अकर इन इयर वन स्टूडेंट्स दिस वन दिस इज सिंपल एन नोटी वी हैव डिस्कस्ड कैश फ्लो इज स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम द नेक्स्ट इयर और इयर वन फ्रॉम means next year not this year next year very next year not in advance or due what is it what is it so not due or in advance where cash flow starts now or in year is zero for example students 700 700 700 700 yes now how to how to calculate present value of this not how to calculate students just see here if we ignore this one this is simple not this is simple and for that formula is annual cash flow cross not factor for number of cash flows Four cash flows for so I don't factor for four cash flows. This is year zero and year zero discount factor is one. Always it is one. So we will add for this one here. So one plus NOT factor. So annual cash flow seven hundred cross one plus NOT factor for four years. Ten percent three point one seven. 3.17 for example r is the same 10% so you see here in this way it will be solved 700 cross 4.17 it is 2919 not due it is also called or in advance both names are used for it next next delayed not or deferred not students where cash flow starts later on and not in year 1 any later on in any year later on in any can i in any year and not in year 1 for example For example, it is zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven hundred, seven hundred, seven hundred, and seven hundred. So here, cash flow is starting from year four. It may start from five, six, seven. Any possibility is there. So this is delayed or deferred NOT. Now, students, attention, please, everybody. I assume that this is year 1 then this is simple not if i assume is year 1 this is simple not so the same formula annual cash flow cross not factor for cash flows 
Now, student, if it is the year one, then it is year zero. If I assume, so it means which the answer which I will get will fall here. Now that answer will be one amount like this. I have to take that to actual year zero. So for one amount, I have to take to year zero, which will be here, we need to multiply it with the discount factor. Is that clear? Or should I repeat it? Is that clear? Or should I repeat it? Okay, I'll repeat, no issue. Okay, leave it. I will explain it another way. Students, I said cash flow is starting from year four. Assume it is year one. Assume it is year one. Then this formula, then this formula will be applied, which we have learned. Just see here, present value, 700 cross 3.17. That will be two, three, we calculated above, just one minute. It was double 219. So the answer will be double 219. Up till now it is clear. Assume that this is year one, this is the solution. Now next from it, you see here, this answer will be if it is year one we assumed that it is then we apply this formula now uh, so answer will fall here this is year zero then this double two one nine is answer here we have to take this double two one nine to year zero so then what we need to do is then what we need to do is just one minute, please. Okay. Then we need to multiply it with the, th because it is year three, three year discount factor. Three year discount factor we have to apply. That is at 10%, point eight two six no, point seven five one, point seven five one. Cross point seven five one. So we'll multiply it and we'll get the answer. Is that clear now? Good. Next. So this was the concept of NOT. Now, three types of NOT we have done with. Now we will start perpetuity. Now we will start the concept of perpetuity. Now we will start the concept of perpetuity. Perpetuity is also series of cash flow with constant amount at constant interval. Two terms are same, but at but for unlimited period of time for unlimited period of time for unlimited period of time
now for unlimited period of time this is the difference for example they say you will be getting 700 from next year till infinity unlimited period of time rate of return is 10 percent so what is the present value that is equal to annual cash flow multiplied by perpetuity factor so annual cash flow cross one over r is called perpetuity factor it is called perpetuity factor so annual factor seven annual cash flow 700 one over r r is 0 0.1 so 7000 present value note it down next students similarly perpetuity is also of multiple types perpetuity yes these are four types simple perpetuity perpetuity due or in advance perpetuity delayed or deferred perpetuity and third is perpetuity with growth with growth with growth so simple perpetuity we have discussed where cash flow starts from year one the above example was this same so perpetuity in advance where cash flow starts from year in year zero or now just see here you are getting 700 this year and so on r is 10 percent you see present value is equal to annual cash flow cross one over r for this simple perpetuity same logic so one is for this year zero one over one one plus one over r so 700 cross one plus one over point one 7700 is there an issue please ask Any question, any issue, please. You are getting it, all of you? Now, next. 
good so deferred or delayed perpetuity deferred or delayed perpetuity where cash flow starts again after year 1 is 0 1 2 3 4 5 for example it's starting from here year 5 and till infinity till infinity r is 10% now present value is equal to annual cash flow cross 1 over r simple perpetuity simple students similarly like not answer will fall here and we have to take that to year 0 cross discount factor so you see here 700 cross 1 over 0.1 cross 0.621 no sorry 683 it is we will multiply and get the answer We'll multiply and get the answer. Four seven eight one. Yes, thank you. Next, the last one. perpetuity with growth cash flow grows at a constant rate in future at a constant rate that is called perpetuity with growth for example they say that you will be getting 700 next year growing at the rate of 3% per annum in the foreseeable future now how to calculate present value now how to calculate present value cf1 divided by r minus g r minus g r minus g cf1 what is one cf1 cf1 is the cash flow in the first year of perpetuity so 700 divided by 0.1 growth rate is this growth rate g 0.3 so 0.03 so answer will be here present value that is 10000 10000 perpetuity with growth
Next. Seven twenty one. No, are you sure? Okay, next. Okay, no issue, no issue, no issue, dear. No issue at all. Next is, I will add further complexity to the same concept. Just see here. They say that you will be getting these cash flows. Okay, first of all, simple, a bit simple. You will be getting 700 from your four, 900, make it 900. 4% growing annually in the future. R is 11%. Now students, if we consider it year one, it is year zero. This is simple perpetuity with growth. We know formula for it. Present value is equal to CF1 R minus G. We know that. We'll apply simple and we'll get the answer. Yes. Just see here. 900.11 minus 0 0.04. And then we will get answer over here. The answer is, for example, the answer for it is 900 divided by 0 0.06, 15,000. Fifteen thousand is the answer. And now next is, you see this is answered here. This 15,000 is here. We have to take you. So multiply it by discount factor because it is perpetuity with the growth. Perpetuity, it has two aspects with growth and as well as it is deferred as well. So, three year discount factor as well 11% discount factor, 11% discount factor, three years that is 0 0.731. So here we multiply and we will get the answer. Twelve eighty eight sub five sir. Thank you, Lenakishi. So that is perpetuity with growth. Okay, students. Students, uh, actually, there were more students enrolled for the session. I don't know why they didn't join, maybe forgot or whatever issue they are facing. So, uh, oh, really, really, this is? Really? Just one minute, please. 900. Yeah, you are right. You are right. You are right. My calculation was wrong. You are right. You are right. 12857. Now, here answer will be different. 0. 0.731. That is 9398. Thank you. Thank you, dear. 939. It. So this is how to calculate present value of perpetuity with growth. Students kindly do revise it very well before coming to next class. I am going to end class today around 25 minutes before. So actually I told you there were more students. 
maybe 10 students were there who enrolled actually for the class but they didn't join i don't know why didn't they come maybe some issue some problem or something else so so that's why because next class what i will be doing i will be uh, doing with you people the starting net present value which is very important so uh if you have any friends who want to join tell them to join now this first session which they have missed its video recording can be provided to them okay right those who have missed so see you next week revise it next week we'll be having three hours in full okay right goodbye goodbye god bless you goodbye